Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Overwatch Weekly. Quite a few things to cover this week. A little bit different than uh the past couple of weeks, so let's just jump into the first thing, which is the Overwatch Live servers have had patch notes. Woo uh, of course, these are the patch notes that come from the PTR that we did just have, uh, that has now concluded. Uh, they did say they were going to try to add something else to the PTR very soon. Um, that is kind of their plan. I don't know how soon we can expect to get anything else on the PTR. To my knowledge, I haven't gotten anything yet. I expect we won't get anything until probably late this week or next week at the earliest, but let's just jump into all of the things that this patch changes. Uh, the first thing, of course, the biggest thing is the new hero, Baptiste. He is now on the live servers. Um, talked about him extensively in the past. I'm sure you've seen stuff about him. A uh, new support hero, so check him out on live servers if you are a console player and could not uh, check him out on the PTR. So, a lot of other things to cover, though, with this patch. So let's jump into the first thing, which is armor. So armor has had a couple of changes. The first is that beam-type damage is now reduced by 20% when hitting armor. So, this affects May's primary fire, Moira's alternate fire and coalescence, Symmetra's primary fire and sentry turret, Winston's primary fire and Zarya's primary fire, uh, and it is now reduced by 20% when hitting armor because it was not a consistent thing before, so now they've made it more consistent across the board. 20% reduction to any beam type weapon to give it a better feel. Um, and I believe it's a buff to m all of them, if not most, or most if not all. I know Winston does more damage now, so it's a big change. Um, so be excited if you are a player of any of those heroes. Uh, damage over time effects are also being changed to no longer be mitigated by armor. So that means Ana's primary fire, Ash's dynamite, Hanzo's dragon strike, May's blizzard, Moira's biotic orb, Widowmaker's venom mine, and Zarya's graviton surge. For damage boost, it is now applied when a projectile is fired rather than when it hits a target. Knockback. Uh, the distance is now more consistent, and heroes that are flying can now be knocked back and slowed, uh, which is pretty noticeable. It's something like a diva charge if it, or a diva shift. If it comes flying toward you, you can knock it back. It's very noticeable um, in game. With sound, there's a couple new sounds. A new sound plays and you land a hit while damage boosted, and a new sound plays and you land a hit, but it doesn't do any damage. Of course, that is. Uh, because of Baptiste's immortality field. Now the heroes, bunch of hero changes to go over. I'll try to go through these quickly and not talk about them in too much detail. I did make a video where I talked about most of these, if not all of these. I'll link to that in the description if you want to check that out for a more in-depth look and more in-depth opinions on my end for all these hero updates. But for Ana, her Nana Boost heal was reduced from 300 to 250. Doomfist's Rising Uppercut and Seismic Slam cooldowns were reduced from 7 to 6 seconds. Hanzo's Sonic Arrow had its detection radius increased from 7 to 9 meters. Junkrat's Frag Launcher had its impact damage increased from 40 to 50. And the Rip Tire cost increased by 10%. Lucio's Amp It Up Speed Boost's Amplification was reduced from 70% to 50%. His crossfade speed boost's effect was reduced from 30% to 20%. Um, if you're confused about what those two mean, just means that in his normal speed form, it used to be 30%, now it's just 20% that it boosts, boosts the speed, while Amp It Up used to boost it 70%, now it's 50%. The Sonic Amplifier sound wave now counts towards offensive assists, and wall riding speed buff increased from 20% to 40%. That is... Uh, just uniform, so even when you are in heal mode, you go 40% faster. 
McCree's Fan the Hammer damage reduced from 55 to 50, and Deadeye damage per second increased from 275 to 550 after locking onto targets for 1.5 seconds. May's Endothermic Blaster primary fire increased, primary fire damage increased from 2.25 to 2.75, which equals 45 to 55 damage per second. Um, so, formerly doing 45 damage per second, now doing 55 damage per second. And the Ice Wall Health was reduced from 500 to 400. Moira's Biotic Grasp had its heal over time duration increased from 3 to 4 seconds, and the total healing increased from 50 to 65. Arisa's Fusion Driver movement speed penalty while firing reduced from 50% to 30%. Farah's Rocket Launcher minimum explosion damage increased from 16.25 to 20. Reapers the Reaping healing received from dealing damage reduced from 50% to 40%. Soldier 76's Pulse Rifle had its damage increased from 19 to 20. Sprint's delay before you can fire the weapon after using it reduced from 0.5 to 0.3 seconds, and Tactical Visor can target Rip Tire and Immortality Field. Sombra's Hack, this is a big change. Cooldown is reduced by half when hacking a health pack, and the uh, visual appearance was changed to more clearly indicate when something has been hacked. It's just quicker and a little bit more obvious. Symmetra's Photon Projector Primary Fire's damage ramps up 20% faster. Torbjorn, uh, his base health was increased by 50 armor, so he has 250 maximum health. And to compensate this, Overload's armor gain reduced from 150 to 100. For Widowmaker, Infrasight reveals enemy health bars and is now cancelled on death. Wrecking Ball's Adaptive Shield no longer cancels roll mode. Thank God that changes was need that change was needed. Zarya's particle cannon, the alternative fire's explosion radius changed to two meters regardless of energy level. And Zenyatta's orb of destruction had its damage increased from 46 to 48, and orb of discord had its effect reduced from 30 percent to 25 percent. So those are all of the hero changes, general changes, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff here if you want to check it out for yourself, which I highly recommend you do. So you can read dev comments, see bug fixes, anything like that. This will be linked in the description. Should be the top link in the description. Uh, and like I said, I'll uh, link to that video below where I talked about a lot of these changes. Some of them hadn't come uh, to be at that point in time when I made that video. That video should be in the description and in the cards as well. Next, we have another fun little thing. This is Baptiste related. Uh, I had mentioned... I want to say two weeks ago, maybe a week ago, but I think it was two weeks ago, um, that they were doing a dev Q&A where they were going to answer some questions about Baptiste, and we finally got some of those questions. Now there's a lot of them here, I don't want to answer all of them, um, just because I want you to be able to check them out for yourself, so I'll leave some of these lower questions if you want to, you know read those, but I will answer one, which the question is, how do you pronounce his name? Jeff says it one way, but the character himself says it another. To which Michael Chu's reply was, Baptiste pronounces the P. So if you're wondering why I went from saying Baptiste to Baptiste, that would be why. There are also some, some really good gameplay questions, such as, Immortality Field feels as powerful as an ultimate ability, why did you decide to make it a regular ability? To which Jeff Goodman said, the immortality field has many disadvantages compared to other support ultimates, such as Transcendence and Sound Barrier. If a Baptiste player can work around these disadvantages, they can potentially use this ability to even stop another team's ultimate, which can be a huge advantage to his team. This is one of the things that makes Baptiste so exciting to play. Um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff here. It's also some of it is pre-PTR stuff, but it's some good stuff. Uh, here um, to check out. If I were you, if you are curious about some of these things, I would check them out. Next, Overwatch League Season 2 Stage 1 playoffs start tomorrow with two matches. Tomorrow, the Seoul Dynasty taking on the New York Excelsior at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
6 p.m. Pacific, and the Boston Uprising taking on the Vancouver Titans at 11 p.m. Eastern, and that is, I'm really bad at math, 8 p.m. Pacific. Friday, I want to mention these because in my video that went up yesterday, um, I said that Atlanta was taking on Toronto and Philadelphia was taking on San Francisco. That is not the case. Uh, there are some errors on the website as well as Nate Nanzer on the um, live stream when they flipped the coin. He said that Philadelphia would be playing San Francisco and Toronto would be playing Atlanta. Uh, but actually Atlanta is taking on Philadelphia and San Francisco is taking on Toronto. Um, so Philadelphia is your number four seed. Toronto is your number three seed. So uh, Atlanta and Philadelphia will be playing at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And San Francisco and Toronto will be playing at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. A link to that stuff in the description. And then you'll be getting two more games Saturday. Um, one at 3 p.m. Eastern. Or Saturday, sorry, Saturday. One at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 Pacific, and 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. That will be your semifinal game. Um, the winners, of course or your semifinal games, your winners from Friday and Thursday will play Saturday. And then Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, is the grand finals of the stage. So it's not the grand finals, stage finals. Uh, and the uh, there's $500,000 on the line. I believe it's 400000 to the winner, 100000 to the loser of the championship. So that's this weekend. Definitely uh, check that out. But with the end of Stage 1 means that we will be getting some stuff for Stage 2. And there's a lot of changes coming in Stage 2, so I wanted to talk about those. The first thing, of course, when Stage 2 starts on Thursday, April 4th, is will Baptiste be playable? And the answer is yes. As they say here, Overwatch's newest hero, Baptiste, is making his debut on the pro stage in Stage 2. While he's technically a support, Baptiste has some unique offensive and defensive abilities. And head over to his official hero page for more details on his kit and check out his origin story cinematic. They also talk about the fact that this most recent patch is, of course, going to be the patch that they use. The one that I just spent time talking about with changes to characters such as Ana, Doomfist, Hanzo, Lucio, McCree, May, Moira, Arisa, Faro, Soldier 76, Sombra, Torgren, Widowmaker, and Wrecking Ball. Um... But those aren't the only heroes that got changes. So that is something, of course, to look at when we get this new patch on the Overwatch League stage. Paris will be playable in the Stage 2 map pool. We'll talk about the full map pool here in a second. Um, but before we get into that, I want to mention that the map order has been changed. So in Stage 1... The map order was, you would open up on control, then go to hybrid, then assault, and then escort. Now, you'll start on control still, but then you'll go to escort, sorry, go to assault, before going to hybrid and escort. So control, assault, hybrid, escort. Uh, the control maps for stage two are Lijiang Tower, Oasis, and Busan, with Lijiang Tower and Oasis replacing Ilios and Nepal. For Assault, we have Paris, Temple of Anubis, and Hanamura, with Paris and Hanamura replacing uh, Horizon Lunar Colony and Volskaya Industries. For Hybrid, it is Blizzard World, Eichenwald, and King's Row, with Blizzard World and Eichenwald replacing Hollywood and Numbani. And for Escort, it is Junkertown, Watchpoint Gibraltar, and Rialto, with Junkertown and Watchpoint Gibraltar replacing... Dorado and Route 66. So those are your map pools, and of course, um, as usual, Tiebreaker, one of the two control maps not already played in a series. Another thing is, they if you go to the schedule, they have tweaked the um, schedule for based on how long matches run, saying here, heading into the 2019 season, we were anticipating matches would take 90 minutes, However, after reviewing the data from Stage 1, we have seen that matches typically are running 105 minutes. To make it easier for everyone to tune in to watch their favorite teams, we're officially resetting the schedule to account for actual match length. 
So check out the schedule page for the updated times. And the final thing is a little tweak to tiebreakers. We saw two different ties um, at the end of stage one with both San Francisco and Seoul tying and Toronto and Atlanta tying. And they say here, we'll also be adding some additional tiebreakers to minimize the odds for a tie in seeding in the stage and regular season playoffs, and they'll announce the specifics at a later date. So we will wait and see what those changes are. The final story is something that was already known, um, but now is like actually official and it is that Overwatch League teams will play in their home cities for the Overwatch League 2020 season. They've been talking about this, they have said it was their their goal, it was what they wanted to do, and they are finally doing it. Nick Nanzer tweeted out saying the Overwatch League is coming home and away. Starting in 2020, all Overwatch League teams will be playing in their home cities we're super excited to see our original vision brought to life. Thanks to all of our fans for your amazing support. There's also a couple videos where he talks about it a little in depth. Those are in the description. Um, there's a Twitter thread from Jacob Wolf, uh, who was at a, uh, a panel that he was at. I believe it was at South by Southwest, um, where he talked about some of the things. But one of the things he did talk about very interestingly uh, that he talked to Nate Nanzer about is stuff such as ticket prices or who's going to be in charge of building the stadiums, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and Jacob Wolf said that Nate Nanzer told him earlier that the teams are in charge of the venues, ticket sales, and associated fees. Capacity hasn't been announced. League is in charge of broadcast. So the Overwatch League, of course, come in two cities. Um, very straightforward for all of the cities, except for, well, where's Florida going to be? Are they going to be in Miami? Are they going to be in Orlando? Are they going to be in Jacksonville, Tampa, Tallahassee, whatever? Uh, I believe that cities that they are linked to are Miami, Orlando. So they'll be in one of those two. Uh, I hope they pick Orlando as it's a more central location and it's a younger city um, in terms you know in general you have a lot of tourist attractions there a lot of places to stay it's a city with infrastructure that you could build up and help building up um, if you want to bring more major teams to the city so that's my hope uh, is that they bring it to Orlando but Miami is also a good choice uh, it really just depends on what the team feels is the best option. But that is everything that I have for you. Um, I hope that you have been enjoying Baptiste. And if you haven't played as him yet, go out and do it. Go get on your game right now and play as Baptiste. Um, or check out some of the other hero changes. All these hero changes are really, really big, really, really nice in a lot of different ways. Could really shape the meta, could change the meta as we know it. Or maybe it'll just, you know, reinforce the same meta. We'll see eventually. Um, let me know down below which hero change um, that you are most excited about, that you think will be the biggest one overall. But I'm going to get out of here for this week. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. But until next time, I'm going to get out of here. See you all later, and bye-bye.